going to do the Kenny Bell install over this weekend. The weather's not great, but I think it will set up pretty well. Um, I think Kenny Bell recommend, or people have recommended around 10 to 15 hours labor time, depending on how good you are. We are complete beginners. Uh, I'm not the most proficient with tools. Um, so I've given myself the rest of today, deep into the midnight and the morning, um, all of Saturday, and hopefully just Sunday morning. Um, we don't really want to go beyond that really, but if need be, we can work into um, Sunday evening. But I'm sure Christian, who's behind me, probably wants to go home. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Oh, we'll see, okay. <laughs> Maybe he wants to spend Sunday night here as well. Let's hope it doesn't get to that. I, I certainly hope so. Let's hope it goes smooth. Um, I've just fired the car up, uh, taken fuse number 49 out for the fuel pump, um, just so it kills any pressure in the fuel lines. And yeah, so now we're ready for disassembly pretty much. Um, let's get to it. Just in time, it's raining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's go.
cats, it's running quite rich. So we've just done step number 75, which is where, 76 rather, um, which is where we put the, pull the fuel line off. Of how many steps? So, it? well, 76 off. 400 odd steps. 400. So we're doing okay. The disassembly is probably the most challenging bit. Won't fit. Um, the assembly is quite okay. Um, yeah, so I think the disassembly is pretty similar to any kit. Um, it's a bit, from the videos I've seen on the internet, uh, for the Rouse supercharger, this is a lot less intensive. Um, we don't need to take the heater hoses off. We don't need to take this off. We don't need to clear all of this stuff up um, because we are not doing anything to the timing cover. Um, everything can stay in, stay in sort of place and uh, once the in intake manifold is off we'll have more than enough space to work. Um, there is something different here for the European cars um, which is something I was worried about but I think we can get around it. I mean others have so there's, there's no reason why we can't and that's step 60 and it says pull out a green lock clip where EVAP line comes up under the brake booster so you can get it off. To pull out the tab, you must pull up on the two green locking tabs towards the fender side and pull out the clip at the same time. So the European cars, our brake booster is on the American passenger side, yeah? Um, so it's a bit different for us. Um, so what we've had to do is we've, uh, for us, uh, an aluminium sort of pipe comes up and we've cut the plastic hose off there and that's where we're just going to attach the Kenny Bell pipe and that should be acceptable, I think. Um, yes, yeah, it's coming along nice. These, these, this guy behind me wants to skip on steps and I'm like, no, no, Ken, Ken, Kenny Bell says no. <laughs> Kenny Bell says no. We just take him hostage and then do it for Right, um, so we need, to put, we need to put a bag over that. Bag over your head. <laughs> Don't worry, don't Thank worry. I'll, 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 I'll be taking you to Gapleby right. pretty soon, mate. <laughs> yeah, to leave. That's right. <laughs>
paper up nice and neat. See, this can't be done door. all the time. This probably isn't done the it's same really every time, isn't it? it? So let's, I can't put everything on, I guess. So it we've got a snag, so the instructions say, uh, you know, you can see that the connector is sort of there, but the way it comes out from the factory, <laughs> you have to cut the tape off the connectors for the knock sensors, you think that's the same and then it, it gives you a bit more room to play like with. They just cover it. And then it's okay. You definitely but do that, and yeah. so it comes out. Yeah, because yeah. you'd never get it nicely no, down there, would you? Pulling on that, like you're pissing them off. You're not going to be doing that, yeah. Oh, it's come out, I think, isn't it? It's an actual yeah. shot, so what are you doing? Yep, yeah, so we're undoing all of this so we can place it in a way that's good because. There's no other way, otherwise you it's not the long extension, enough. don't you? Yeah, to yeah. go all the way down to the bottom. Exactly, it's not long enough otherwise. Now, now we have room. Yeah, because it's got to go right down just, here. Yeah, tape it all back up, and it's just not stretched. Whew, it's back breaking work. That's all. Yeah, I think that's for, so. If you do what you said yeah. and put that on one side. And then a bit on the other, yeah. and then tape it all down. I think it'll be good. Yeah, I definitely think you've got to tape the whole wires first, and then tape it last. Down. Yeah, yeah, I know. Right. I think it even wants you to put that aluminium. What is it? Is it aluminium tape? Yeah, aluminium mm. tape. Yeah. is a heavy duty pipe thread compound with PTFE tape. Um, I initially bought this but then I found out that it doesn't actually ever set. Um, so I'm not sure about that. So then I ended up going for liquid PTFE which actually does set and it does dry. Um, I think I would probably use this if I was going to be unscrewing these at some stage. But I'm not going to be. So I'm going to go for this.
Okay, day two. Kenny Bell supercharger install. Asman, oh, where are we up to? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see you. Um, so we had a bit of a nightmare yesterday, which you've probably all seen. Um, yeah, it was bad. Um, but we're okay. Uh, we managed to uh, uh, drill the old, most of the old uh, nut out, uh, the bolt out, and we re-threaded it to M6. The problem we found was all four of the holes weren't tapped in deep enough. So I took it to my buddy Paul, uh, very experienced tech, 40, 45 years experience. Um, so he did all the work, did us a favor on a Saturday. We went to see him at half eight. Yeah. Um, called him up at 8.15, he was like, come on over. Sorted it out for us, and the bypass tube is on. The only problem we had was that the bolt that we messed up on, um, we couldn't get it tapped all the way. So to make sure we have a tight seal, we had to put a washer in there. It's kind of cool in a way, it serves as a reminder of the story behind what happened. Um, the moral of the story is stick to the torque specs because if it's not going in and you threaded it properly, then there's something wrong. And in this case, they just weren't tapped deep enough. Mm -hmm. It's not a huge issue. I had an M5 tab, uh, sorry, M6 tab with me anyway. I should have just done that, to be honest. But that's what happens at 2am <laughs> yeah exactly so um, yeah I mean live and learn uh, I've been in much 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 worse spots uh, you know the key you have to remember is if you're having a problem you are not the only one who's had that problem in the world there are probably thousands of people who've had that problem and one of the one of those two well one of those idiots has probably put the answer on YouTube so uh, <laughs> I'm one of those idiots and I'm putting it on YouTube. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said it, I'm an idiot. <laughs> so we're just putting the intake seals back on and yeah, we're pretty much ready to put this this on the on the engine. We also, because obviously we were playing around with the iron filings, I've also put in an endoscope and just had a look, make sure there's no iron filings in there uh, or steel or whatever it is. And, and it's, it's all clear. Um, so yeah, because when we were doing the taps, uh, we put duct tape behind it to make sure nothing fell in, um, and, and it's all good. So yeah, we're good to go. We're good to go. so smooth. Come on, that went on so smooth. That made up full trouble yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> that just went pop. I didn't, I didn't even touch it. One man job. One man job. Don't need a friend for that, Steph. Just need some muscle. Alright, <laughs> <coughs> oh, bolt it down. You did... You did. Easy. You in? There's some slight. There we go. Now we're in. Yeah. Cool. So just, just talk us through uh, our adventure today. Oof, what went on right. with this? So we initially placed this down, but these were facing the wrong way. I think Kenny Bell did them to protect them through shipping, and rightly so, to be honest. They are. They do look quite fragile, and the packages come obviously from the United States to here, and then they were aware that it was going to come to here. 
but there's no supplement saying that you know they should face a certain direction especially when they've been turned and uh, there's no instructions in the book that we could see uh, that stated that you might have to turn them uh, so the initial one was wrong so we had to take it off and put it right now and yeah that's okay now now we follow the manual again <laughs> yeah so to be honest the plenum didn't go on as smoothly as it did last time did it it was no, fairly no. smooth, yeah. but I don't think any seals have come loose or anything. No, nah, no, we're so, good. I mean, nothing is sort of, this is on solid, and this is how it should be, you see. Mm. Um, so yeah, now we're just going to torque the nuts, bolts rather. Um, 80 mil, 90 mil, 100 mils here for the fuel rail. Crisscross, two passes. So yeah, let's do it. Anyway, so we've got the, uh, the pulley assembly attachment plate thing on. Um, we Loctited our our bolts as well uh, because, to be honest, 16 foot pounds of torque is not much. Um, and I think if there's one place there's going to be a lot of vibration or whatever, it's going to be here. So I just wanted to make sure that those rusts don't come loose. Me because I am never going back in that timing cover ever again. Uh, if I have to go back down there, it's a new crate mower. Simple. That's it.
guys. Hey everybody, change of clothes, new day. Oof, man, anyway. Um, just a bit of a recap. Uh, we've put in the EVAP wire extension and the throttle body wire extension. I think it's those two, yeah. Because um, the throttle body part cable was here um, and the EVAP sort of was here as well. Uh, Kenny Bell supply a good quality loom, but for me, I, I like to make it look OEM. Um, so I taped each of their plastic looms up and then each of those two I then taped together so it looks neat and OEM really. That's how it all come from the factory. Well, that's how it does come from the factory. Um, and you can't tell the difference. And then you just run it along with zip ties, cable to the back over there and then it's ready to go where it needs to go. Things have been going quite smooth now, uh, instructions seem to be pretty good. Uh, we're at the heat, the heat exchanger stage, we're going to do the spark plugs as well now before we go any further with tying stuff down. Yeah. Well, where are we up to in here? Um, we're about to put the spark plugs up with a few lines on, yep, the PCDs on. Yeah. I'm using the, yeah, the moment. just give me a minute. Um, so yeah, we're just mowing along. Few lines on, uh, the solenoid is plugged in as well and attached to where it needs to be. The only problem we have is because our car is a European car, um, our brake booster is located on the right side of the car, where the, uh, where the passenger would sit on the American cars. So we need to get a new hose, which is long enough. Yeah, that's not funny, that's not funny at all. Um, yeah, so let's get there. Ready? Okay, we're recording. Update, we've got the water pump on, uh, we've got the heat exchanger on, look at it, beautiful. I think I might lower it a little bit more, because there is play in there, just to maximize the airflow through it. Because I think we can go down by maybe another inch. We'll do that after to see how the, how the bumper fits. Uh, made some nice clean cuts here, just so that everything sits beautifully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's looking good. It's looking good. A bit awkward because we've got the Mishimoto oil cooler pipes going through as well. But nothing nothing we couldn't handle. Um, next up is just to finalize the water pump assembly down there. And then it's the wiring. So the wiring is a bit of a nightmare. So a lot of soldering, a lot of you getting, we have to take this apart. Once we've done that, um, yeah, so once we've done that, is to do then we have to put the reservoir on and we've changed the spark plugs and the injectors already we've already done this bit and we're, modif we're modifying the uh, uh, the valve cover as well and then it's supercharger on so we are within touching distance the only problem like I said we've had with the European version is our brake boost is on the other side and because the Kenny Bell kit is geared towards left-handed cars they don't supply a hose long enough to run from this solenoid all the way across to the other side but it runs perfectly fine from here to there for the brake booster but unfortunately it's not good enough for us but the hose should be coming in the next few days um, but there's nothing stopping us from getting everything else done whilst we can um, Christian's got a go with the fancy camera um, so I'm gonna start recording with my phone um, hopefully the quality won't be too bad I'll give you guys as many updates as I can. Um, I'm not going to do a late night today. I've had, well, Christian and I have had, what, two yeah, very many hours. nights. Yeah, uh, many hours. I think, I think in the, since Friday, we started working, we slept for about 11, 12 hours. Yeah, not 12 not hours. Enough. Yeah, so it's been, it's been quite bad. That plan has been out so many times, it's ridiculous. But, 
Yeah, you want to just, just say what we had to do with this? Yeah, so what we had to do, so it came like this from factory, so the, so this I'm talking with reference to the US guys now, yeah? So European guys, it's different. So, well, just bear that in mind, the our steering wheel is on the different side, so based on the American steering wheel, which is on the left side of the car, yeah, our long hose, the 57 inch, which goes directly to the heat exchanger, is on the driver's side. Yep. yep, and our 30 inch hose, uh, 30 inch, half inch in inner diame diameter hose is on the passenger side and it goes to the reservoir. In the manual in the old days, what would happen is these bars are pointing like that. Okay, like that. Y shape. Yep. Yeah. So it's actually the passenger side that goes to the heat exchanger and the driver side that goes to um, the, uh, the reservoir. But I'm speaking to Damien on Instagram. Uh, Lion Bill, thank you very much, man. Thank you for preventing us from making a mistake. And um, appreciate that. Thank you for taking your time out on your weekend to get back to us. Um, and he said that the bars were correct. There is new routing in the system, so we just have to uh, connect. Basically, you have to connect the, bar, uh, the pipes naturally. You know, that's what we did initially, but then when we looked at the manual, we were like, oh, something's not right. And then I spoke to one or two guys um, who have done a Kenny Bell install in the UK, um, and they said, no, this should be a Y. So we took the plenum out, did that, and then uh, Damien got back to us. He was like, no, it's a new routing. Go back to what you were doing. So you have to take it back out again. and put the pipes on again, but now we're happy um, that everything is nice and good. Yeah. Another thing, so Nick has just finished doing this for me, um, is if you look here, this is the EVAP sol solenoid, the brake booster stuff here. Um, I haven't used the engine mounts because I've got a Mishimoto oil cooler with a sam sandwich plate there. So if I lower the engine by three quarters of an inch, uh, my oil filter would be impossible to change and it would probably hit the chassis. I've got, luckily I've got an aftermarket hood, Savini, so that gives me more than enough space for the supercharger. Um, but that means because the engine is hitting, sitting three, three and a quarter inches higher, the, the EVAP solenoid uh, fitting was hitting the uh, valve cover. And obviously when the engine's under load, it's gonna, it's gonna rotate um, well, it's going to try and rotate, it's going to move. So we've cut a half moon out of it, well, Nick's cut a half moon out of it for us. And uh, it just means that there's no unwarranted strain on this clip. Um, so. Yeah, neat job. Good yeah. man. Up next for us now, once I've got this on and connected to the heat exchanger, um, is basically to take apart that fuse on the fuse box and get into some serious wiring. Um, because what we have to do now is where's the relay? There it is. We have to connect this relay business um, and make these splices. So this one wire splice I think we have to do. Literally just one. But to do that we have to we have to get in there and mm. put this on. But this is for the water pump I believe. Uh, yeah. A little bit crazy but it's gotta be done. So Christian's going. It's okay with Nick. See <laughs> so, folks. Uh, nah, we're gonna we're gonna sort this out. Yeah, thank you very much. We'll keep you updated. So here we are, splicing into the fuel pump wire. Um, it's it's quite a heavy gauge. Um, you can see Nick is working on it because uh, Nick is the man as far as the soldering is concerned. The manual specifically states you better know how to do it or you find someone. Um, yeah, it's coming along. It's coming along. Getting this out is not difficult. For the clips that go here, um, you sort of have to get a pick in and lever it up. Yeah? Uh, start from the left side, so follow the numbers that they've actually given you. That, that worked the best. Um, we tried to do this side first because there are fewer clips here thinking that we'll be able to lever it up or separate it a lot easier, but, but we couldn't. It will only come out so far before you have to cut the cable tie holding these wires against the, um, the fuse box and then you'll be good to go.
Oh, that's video. That's dead. Yeah. I'm gonna take this thing off. So, time for the marriage. Uh, we have to take this off. Been looking forward to this. Sorry, Christian. I know I said you could remove. Actually, no, you can still remove it if he shows up. But oh, the bloody. <laughs> So the supercharger is on, bit of a pain because it's so heavy and the thing we had a problem with was this heater hose but it's down, it's out of the way, it looks good. This is how we got it looking, just to help you guys out. Um, the actual pattern of the torquing has to be 21 foot pounds so from the center, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven eight the advice i would give you all is before you bolt the supercharger on and this is where we struggled get the nuts or get the bolts rather just get them in don't not with a torque wrench or anything just get them in with your hands because there are burrs in those threads and they don't want to go okay so just get them in and then because i'm being extra cautious i made a note of which nut went where on each side and then we put the supercharger down and then we put the same nuts down in the same holes and they just tighten up with hand up to this point so all we have to do now is to torque them so it just reduces the risk of something going horribly wrong um, definitely worth doing but it does look good it does look good right time to torque them and I'll see you guys in a minute 21 foot pounds so here we are the M is gone no more M for Mishimoto. Um, one of the things I did was I obviously had the diode dynamics tri bar and demonize. And the problem I'm facing is this is this should be a really small step, but I've got all my wiring looms here, and I've obviously taped them all up really well, all the clips. So it's taking me a long time to disconnect those. Once they are disconnected pipe's gonna come through there <sighs> dang it's gonna be tight but it'll fit and then I just have to make sure everything is good um, yeah so we'll see um, I need to I need to do a lot of wiring here to be honest because I've got my hood vent indicators as well which are an aftermarket thing which need to go on here and yeah so let's see what happens
four. Um, I just did a lot of pre-assembly yesterday, nothing much, nothing major. I've just been so exhausted with work and everything. Uh, plus I was waiting on some parts, the pipes have arrived, um, and I've got some clips to fit, so we're good to go. Um, hoping to maybe even get the belt on today. I'd, getting the other one off was a struggle, we had to cut it off. Don't really need it to be honest. Um, but yeah, we'll see if we can get the belt on and take it from there. See you guys in a bit. Update, so. Took longer than I expected. We bent the tab. The paint's cracked a bit, so I'll have to touch that up eventually. I tried bending it using some pliers, but it didn't work. My advice would be to bend this when all of this area is clear. So before you put the brake solenoid on, uh, sorry, the EVAP solenoid, before you put this pipe on, just bend that sucker. I thought about doing it, but I didn't. I should have done that. Um, okay, easy enough. The rest of it is okay. The only problem is getting to that bolt in there. You see that bolt? Yeah? That bolt is a nightmare. So you either need a long hex socket, which I would advise you get, or, uh, you know, just persevere. I persevered in it, and it ended up being relatively okay. So we're fairly, fairly good in that respect now. Um, yeah, we're getting there. It's beginning to look like the Kenny Bell is almost there now. Um, so yeah, coming along. Another update. We just got the um, liquid cooling hoses attached. And also the throttle body uh, to the system. What I've also done is I've also applied some heat shielding in these sensitive areas. So you can see even on the EVAP solenoid cable, just to be safe. It's not required probably, but it's just something I feel I, f I feel better knowing is safe, to be honest. Next, reducer. Whew, okay. Almost everything is done. Um, intake tube, filter is in about the right place. I gotta do the wiring for the tri bars. The big challenge now is to get the belt on. It's gonna be a bit of a struggle. Let's see what happens um, but yeah everything seems to be fitting the other problem I think I'm gonna have is I'm gonna have to chop into that uh, which will be fun as well because I don't think this is uh, look at how high it sits it's touching there and over there as well so it's not gonna go any lower but we'll get it right we'll get it right getting excited more updates my bypass valve was not um, placed on already when the when the item was shipped, simply because it can get damaged during shipping. So Kenny Bell took that off. So I'm just following a supplement which tells you how to put it on. The the one thing the supplement doesn't mention is to put PTFE on these bolts because it's sort of go into the uh, supercharger. Um, me just to be safe, I thought why not? It can't hurt and it just makes a better seal. So I've done that on there. Um, so yeah, just building it up. One of the tips I'll give is make sure you put a towel here or something because if you drop an Allen key or, or or a bolt and it goes down in the valley, then you're pretty, yeah, it's not great. <laughs> um, so put a, put a microfiber here um, and if anything drops, it'll catch it and trust me, it'll save you a lot of hassle. Um, I got lucky, I dropped my um, Allen key down there but it was in a decent enough spot that I got a, a magnetic thing and pulled it out barely so um, that would be my advice on this step um, take your time don't rush you're so close right now I'm struggling to get the belt on um, but I thought I'm not gonna rush uh, I'm gonna build up the bypass system because it's not really gonna get in the way of putting the belt on um, once the belt is on, it's just a case of connecting up the battery, uh, putting the coolant in there, and burping the system, and uh, checking for leaks really, and uh, yeah, so I'll keep you guys with I have not plugged in my PCV for this side, um, I've got some JLT catch cans, and I'm trying to figure out the best way to, to mount those. Um, I have no idea where I'm going to mount those to be honest. Um, but this is in, so I can probably, you know, 
mount them here on the water bowl so it stays here reaches and that that should actually be okay that's not a bad shout so i might do that on this side and on this side i think i'm gonna try and place get like a bracket made and place it here but meanwhile just leave it in here somewhere and uh, that will be the supercharger protecting it again so i've also got a upr breather coming for the oil cap just to release some of the some of the uh, piston blowback pressure i think it's called or whatever i don't know don't quote me on it um, but yeah we're progressing we're almost there again the key at this stage is don't rush i'm i'm desperately trying not to rush so just take your time get the steps done you're close but you know one wrong step and you could have a uh, have a bad start and you don't want that you want it to be right first time uh, i'm hoping for that and i'll record it if it doesn't go well i'll i'll cry um so yeah thank you for following stay tuned and uh yeah i'll i'll keep post well keep you guys up there and hopefully you're finding what i've said so far useful This belt. Right, update. Whew, everything's done. Um, just need to put some oil in the supercharger, coolant in the coolant tank, plug the battery up. But dang, this belt, I can't get it on, man. I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm gonna call Kenny Bell, see what the hell's going on. I think I might need to move the uh, top idler pulley here. Where is it? Under the light, there we are, right in the center of your screen. Might need to move it to a lower hole, but we'll see. We've got plenty to be going on with anyway. So yeah, oh man, it, it sucks. <laughs> the belt is on! We're good to go. We just gotta put the PCV stuff on. Uh, whew. Oh man, okay. So the tensioner, uh, my trusty demonstrating guy here. Where is it? So we've got this because you can shorten it. Yep, I would recommend a shorter bar so you can fit it in there. Can you just hold the camera? Yep. Then you just get it in there. Yep. And then you literally just lever it. Yep. It's pretty tight right now with the belt on, but you literally just do this motion. It's that way. Yep. That way. That way, yep, and then that's it. So, good luck. It's actually pretty easy. We, what we did was we put the belt on the tensioner first, and then we walked it on, and it was actually really easy. So, you just sort of get a torque wrench in there, start in this direction, and then work your way, and then you just need to sort of um, move with one hand, push with another, get help. You're gonna need a buddy to do this. It's not a one-man job, really. And watch your fingers, because if you get them trapped, RIP. Anyway, we're going to burp the system. Woohoo! Right, so good news, no leaks. Um, we were worried about this one at the bottom, but there's no way that's anything other than overflowing cooler. I mean, we can check tomorrow again. I think this is done for the day. Uh, we've checked the connections on the coolant bottle. Everything is good. Um everything is connected up and we're just letting the system burp i'm just gonna key on again we took how much about six liters yep yeah. so we we went for a 50 50 because it gets quite cold in the uk so 50 50 three liters of coolant three liters of uh, deionized water so about five and a so bear that in mind when you're doing yours so because the instructions aren't very clear so so you should mix up at least five liters of the stuff yeah so and then the rest you can just top up as and when I ended up buying bloody 10 litres of the coolant and 10 litres of, of DNA as well. It doesn't matter, it's the same coolant as my, my engine, so it's all good. Um, I've had to modify this a little bit, I'm not finished with that obviously, because the air intake was touching with the Savini hood uh, ram air duct. Um, yeah, it's okay. I think, to be honest, if you put the, um, the engine mounts on, which will lower the engine by three quarters of an inch, you'll probably be okay, to be honest. I don't think it will be an issue. So yeah, um, all good in the hood. Um, tomorrow I'll do the lighting and we'll probably do the uh, 
do the tune as well. I just don't want to put the tune on now just in case I see some error codes and it screws something up. Yeah, I'm being extra cautious, but Kenny Bell put the bumper on and then they make all the connections, um, I believe. Yep. Yeah. So they make all the light connections and then they put the tune. So I'm going to follow that exactly. Um, and phew, I can't believe it. We're almost done. This is great. This is great news. Uh, see you guys in a bit. So we're, we're almost primed to get the tune up. Um, the bumper's on, the connections are all made. I'm gonna take the blue film off, connect the battery, connect the battery charger up, and then uh, time to upload the tune. So this is the moment. that smile Excited. right update um ooh, tripping over stuff um tried to model well just slightly clean the dirt in there and in there um got all the wiring done so the wiring is all nice and neat replace the relay here which i think is a lot better um this is all done as well so this is the loom hanging away over there um the only issue I've had is I've tried to modify the European battery cover, but no good. That, sh that stuff is fiberglass. Don't get that on your arms or your hands. Mine are itching really bad. So I'm just going to put this in, which is the battery case. But what I've done is I put some heat tape around the area which is exposed to the engine so that you know the battery doesn't get too hot um, because that does have insulation on it. This stuff here, which is itchy. Um, so it should just be fine to be honest um, yeah that's about it a lot of work to get this bloody wiring right but it's done I still have to paint Kenny Bell on there um, but that shouldn't take too long catch you guys in a bit so we're doing the so we're doing the tune 22 percent follow the instructions exactly um, don't think you know better Kenny Bell know better um, and let's pray to God it works I honestly don't know what to do if it doesn't because I genuinely feel we've done everything right. Give you more updates later. So we've successfully programmed it, which is great news. Um, now we just got to press Y and uh, fire it up. Right, we're doing final checks before we start, just to make sure everything's connected, everything's plugged in. No, no, undo it if I were you, because it's going to go down fast. Uh, so let's let's run through the list. Math is connected, throttle body is connected, um, IAT is connected, yep. All the PCV hoses are connected. Um, AC compressor connected, we've connected that as well. Brake booster is connected, batteries are connected. Um, I think all this this is connected, all the good that's connected. Belts on tight. Nothing's in the way. I can go for it. Just uh, pull. Yeah, I got the nails, so you'll need some long nails for that. Long nails? Just 30. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Just 31. Yeah. yeah it should be okay. It's going to run rough initially. Let's do it. Yeah, we made it back, it's not that. You just touch it. 
2nd of June 2020 we've got the coronavirus to deal with um, but I've been managed uh, I've been able to drive the car quite a bit actually um, so I just wanted to summarize my views on the install and now that I've lived with the kit for well over six months and how I found it I think the kit is great I love the power I love the power delivery um, it is fun. It is fun. Uh, I am glad that I did the supporting mods that I did do. So suspension, um, oil pump gears, ATI damper, you know, uh, oil cooler from Mishimoto, um, etc, etc, etc. There's another video for that. It should be on my channel soon and my philosophy on how to uh, get a stout, reliable, supercharged car which will outlast you um, so that will come shortly I just wanted to put this video out there um, in terms of the install um, I've looked back at it and I thought it was an easy install to be honest uh, there were two areas where we messed up uh, the first one was the manifold which goes within the valley um, we snapped a bolt, uh, the, one of the bolts which connects the bypass tube. Uh, that's our fault, really. Um, Kenny Bell don't really have anything to do with that. Uh, I think we just needed to first, I think, just screw him in and we would have been okay. But it was 2 a.m. and I over-talked him. The weird thing was, as I was talking them, the torque wrench would click. And then if I try and... Because I always talk twice, so once click and another click just to make sure I've got it right. So the first click would happen and then the second click wouldn't happen unless the bolt turned a bit. And that happened a few times and I was like, what's going on? Is it tight enough? Is it not tight enough? The torque wrench is fine um, because I just bought it. It comes with a certificate of testing. I use another torque wrench as well just to be sure to make sure that both are about right and they work. So I, to be honest, don't know what's happened there, um, live and learn, um, so I'm not going to put it down to Kenny Bell's fault, I don't think it is, um, I think it was just tiredness and clouded thinking at 2am, 3am, just general frustration more than anything else. Um, secondly, again with the manifold, the instructions, I've talked about this in the video, specified um, well, not specified, they should have sold a photo where the inlet and outlet was sort of like this. And one went to the heat exchanger, whilst the well, pump and the heat exchanger, sorry, one went to the heat exchanger, the other went to the reservoir, which then goes into the pump and then the heat exchanger. So I looked at the photo and I saw the manifold and it wasn't right, so I decided to turn them. After I spoke to someone who's actually done one or two Kenny Bell installs in the UK as well. Um, and so I had to take it off. 
get it to Y, put it back on, and then by that time, Damien, Damien Bell got back to me, and he was like, no, the new routing is this. So I had to take it off the third time and revert back to the way it came to me and the pipes were fine. So that killed a lot of time for us. And the whole manifold stage is pretty much wasted half a day, I would say easily with the broken bolt and everything. Um, set us back quite a bit on the install. Apart from that, I think the install went really well. I couldn't be happier. Um, in terms of ease of doing, to be honest, because you don't have to mess around with the cooling system, you don't have to drain it or anything like that, I would say you can do this. I am a complete amateur when it comes to this. Um, I've never done anything like this before, so what you see in the video is just bone stock. Guy just picks up some tools, buys some tools because he wants to save some money. Um, has a few friends, buys a couple of jack stands and gets on with it and I've not had a single problem, I've not had a single hiccup for this kit and I think I've put about three and a half thousand miles on it to date and the kit is stout, it is so so good and I love it, I love it, it's not too much power, it can be too much power if it's damp or if it's wet and yeah it's 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 been great instructions wise i think the instructions apart from that picture on the on the connections into the manifold um the instructions are super super clear and um, the pdf on the surface as you saw on my tablet really really helped uh, allowed us to zoom in etc and yeah i would i would give the kit if it wasn't for that photo and the mishap because of that photo, because that alone caused us to remove the manifold three times and store it and remove it. Luckily, um, it's not a big job because um, you can still leave the, uh, the pulley attachments on. You just have to take the fuel rail off uh, with the injectors and then take it off. So that, that was annoying, but you know, it, it's okay. and. If I had to say the hardest part of the install, um, the hardest part of the install was, I would say probably even just taking that bloody front bumper off. If you're on your own and you don't have a friend to hand, most of the stuff on this you can do on your own, okay? Um, even putting the manifold into place, I've shown you can just do that on your own. Um, but taking that bumper off and putting it on, I, I hate doing it. Um, those seven millimeter bolts near the fender are just a nightmare. I left them out, I don't even use them anymore. Um, so that's probably the most challenging bit of this whole insult, which goes to show how good of a kit it is in terms of ease of install and yeah, and reliability. It, uh, Honestly, it has not missed a beat. Every time I put my foot down, the power delivery is there and it's ready to go. And I couldn't be happier with it. Um, the wine is not as high as I would like it to be, um, but it's it's good enough uh, for just enjoying, enjoying your ride. The car does crackle and pop a lot more than it did before. Um, so yeah, I would give it a 9 out of 10. Um, in terms of installation, I think if you can take that front bumper off, and if you've ever changed spark plugs on a vehicle, you will be able to do this install yourself without any problems. You will not have any problems, especially once you've seen this video, uh, and you've seen sort of the raw element of where the hiccups were and what the problems were, um, you'll be alright. And if you do get stuck, send me a message and I'll try and nudge you in the right direction quickly. And again, obviously Kenny Bell are always available as well. I've put the um, PDF link down there. Um, so you can have a look at the steps required. And uh, the only thing I would say is that 
if I was in the States, I wouldn't have got the 2.8 simply because in the UK we run pump gas, which is 93 octane, um, 93 ron or, you know, whatever. There's different ways of measuring in the UK and the States. And uh, I would have got the, I think the 3.6 because I would be running the E, um, you know, 85 or whatever, whatever you can get on, on your pump. And uh, I would be wanting to run more boost, so probably 13 to 14 PSI. Um, but because we're limited to about 10, 11 on pump gas, you know, the 2.8 is a more efficient option. But, you know, if I was in the States, you know, I, <laughs> I wouldn't even think about getting anything else other than a 3.6 and running on the E. It's, it's as simple as that. Get bigger injectors. Um, do the supporting mods that I've sort of said in my other video, which will be live soon. Um, and you'll be good to go. You'll be good to go. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. Like and subscribe. Share with your friends. And if you have any questions, hit me up. I'm happy to help. Have a good day. Peace out.